Power TV, we believe that by building strong women, we're building strong families, which therefore builds strong communities and therefore builds a stronger, better world. Today, we are celebrating and talking about family. Kindy Gill is a family transformation coach with Spark Expansion. What do you do? Um, I concentrate on, on what goes on in terms of the dynamics at home. And my real role is about helping mothers to be able to mother in a way that they feel really, really confident that they're creating and assisting their children to become great leaders that are self-sufficient, self-motivated, but best of all, children that really love themselves too. What are the different types of dynamics? Are there different categories, different snapshots of, of different stages of a functional family? I don't label it as such in terms of there's a certain style of human being. All I concentrate on is the normal dynamics that happen in most homes. So in most homes, we do get out, we do butt heads. We find ourselves having arguments, either with our partner or with our children or the children amongst each other. And this is often on a daily basis. This Absolutely. is something that we deal with every day in our lives. Absolutely. And because we deal with it every day of our lives, somehow we've accepted that that is the norm Mm -hmm. and it's supposed to stay like that. Mm -hmm. The same with the tears. Um, it may not be that uh, it's all about arguments. We might find somebody in tears over something or other. And again, we tend to think that this is just normal dynamics in a home. And you're saying that it's not, or does it doesn't have to be? I'm saying that it is a part of the dynamics that do need to evolve, but mm -hmm. there's another step further that every time there's a backlash, every time there's a trigger, every time there's a set of tears, there's something behind that that we can explore as mothers and we can try and find what it is that, that is behind the tears that actually stops that type of stuff from happening to a point where systematically and slowly the dynamics at home become more flowing and nicer and calmer and more peaceful and we get to more of what we really, really want. I think we've all had conversations around how the person we are at work and how we interact with colleagues at work is very different than the person we show up as at home. That's right. And that impacts the experience that we have That's with right. the people who are supposed to be the most dearest yes. to us. Why is that? Why are we different at work than we are at home? We tend to be different at home because we sort of believe we're not going to lose these people. So we carry our stress home, we're less afraid to be who we really are, we're less afraid to show that we're actually stressed out, that we're upset, that we don't want something to happen a certain way, and it's easier to use the tongue in an adverse way, mm -hmm. because there's that sort of comfort that I'm not going to get fired from being a mother, I'm not going to get fired from um, uh, being a child or a son or a daughter, like there's that sense where there's a bond, but that bond brings in an element of, of taking each other for granted. How did you get into this work? I got into this uh, because of my own fair share of drama at home. So I used to be... You know be, what it's like to absolutely, be I, in the yelling position. Absolutely, and, that's yeah. right. Um, I have three children, um, two of which that have gone through the teenage phase and one that's actually in the teenage phase right now. She's, fi she's 15. Um, and I got into this particularly because I was in a leadership role as a chief executive in an organisation responsible for 3,000 people. And what I found was that the dynamics in terms of leading the family home was very, very different. Mm -hmm. um, and there was more heartache. There was more personal vested interest in trying to figure out why is the drama here. Um, Which makes it harder to acknowledge, start making changes, because it's so internally wrapped up in, in, in personal experiences That's that right. we think we don't have a choice in changing. That's right. Yeah, and mm. progressively some of us become more and more miserable and I had my fair share of misery. My sister had a car accident and she became paralyzed mm. um, and that caused me a whole host of um, internal angst because I couldn't understand why, why she had the limbs before and then suddenly what had been created and was part of her body, not all of it was going to be functional from that day onwards and then she became paralyzed from about here downwards. Um, and that started my journey of like, what is this destruction really about? And why do we have our miserable days? And why do we have our heartaches and our heartbreaks? And what causes that? And then eventually we moved to a new country. We came to Canada from England. And that wasn't easy for you at first. It you... was very, very tough. And my relationship with my husband became very, very tough at that point. And I was on the brink of actually getting into a stage where it felt like a divorce was imminent. And that was where my personal grief became so intense that I became equally desperate to find a way out. And you did. 
thankfully. Yes. Okay, we're going to be back with Kindy Gill talking about the answers that she found to move from angst into a more fulfilled state of being and women as leadership, as leaders in the role of mother. We're back with Kindy Gill, a family transformation coach who believes that it's in those struggles that we find our success. Absolutely. What do, and, and that those struggles determine the success. What do you mean by that? Um, I feel like we're all sort of being set up. <laughs> set up in a big way. I, I have a bad connotation around that. <laughs> sort of being set up in a big way to be able to evolve in this big school that we live in. Mm. And sort of life itself is one big school. And then within it, our family environment is a smaller school that we're actually functioning in. And my understanding of the way that seems things seem to be unfolding is that we're given an opportunity to see some of our ugly faces, some of our not so nice faces, so that we have an opportunity to rise out of them mm -hmm. and become more than that, so that we keep growing and become better as human beings. What, what things have to be in place, do you think, to recognize that a struggle is actually an opportunity? And even replacing the word struggle with the word lesson? I think, well, actually, that's, a, that's probably a piece of education. Mm -hmm. Because I think too many of us as human beings have been taught somehow that we're supposed to be living this utopia life, like Cinderella lives happily ever after. And if we're not, we're doing it wrong. And there's then, something wrong with And us. there's some sense that something's not right if we haven't actually achieved that. And that, to me, is one of the biggest crying shames about um, fairy tale stories, particularly like that one, because life doesn't unfold that way. Mm -hmm. We are work in progresses as mm -hmm. people. I am, you are, our children are, our partners are, the people, the colleagues, everywhere that we're relating to. We're just a moment in time, a person in a certain state, right? Mm -hmm. And we're destined to become better. So just by mathematics alone, mm -hmm. we're going to have our struggles if we're not in that stage where we've evolved to absolutely everything that we can be. A lot of that falls on the shoulders of mother. Yes. And the expectations, the responsibilities, the, the weight That's that right. the mother in a family has to carry That's right. is overwhelming for a lot of Absolutely. moms. Absolutely, because a lot of mothers are trained by watching their mothers. Mm -hmm. And they saw them giving, and then we by nature also want to give because we're very nurturing, very loving, we very, tend to be very unconditional in our giving. Mm -hmm. But what we haven't really learned is the opposite, is like how do we give to ourselves? Mm -hmm. How do we nurture ourselves? How do we actually applaud ourselves for our gifts? And so today, now as a mother, the way that I really go about gauging like my sense of value as a leader is through the honest conversations that my children are able to have with me, mm -hmm. where they're able to tell me everything that's happening as clearly as, and as factually as it's really happening without that sense of dread, fear, censorship that says, if my mum he hears this, it means this X or Y or Z or whatever it might be. Because I've chosen to really parent in a way where fear is absent and as to the best of my abilities to try and keep the control out of it too. Have you taken some of the leadership skills and practices that you had in the corporate world and applied it within your family? And what does that look like? A lot of those leadership skills are actually very different because in the corporate world, a lot of it is fear and reward based. Right. So people tend to know that there's a yeah, vision. Get get fired. That's, That's right, it. right? And it's as easy as that. Mm -hmm. But those two things can't happen at home, right? Mm -hmm. Because there's a lot more honesty that's happening. And if you have a sense of fear to speak up in the corporate world because you think you're going to lose your job, your child is not going to be scared to say, Mum, you're being a hypocrite. Your child's going to tell you that, right? And then you have a choice That's in right. that moment that will develop the dynamic. Exactly. So if I'm going to be defensive about what I've just heard, then obviously it's going to escalate to become more of a problem. But if I'm more open-minded about what I've just heard, mm -hmm. and I'm seeing it as actually my child's guiding me and helping me, but at the same time there might be something for me to be helping the child with too, mm -hmm. then there's an opportunity for some real conversations that are going to actually bear some fruits. As a mom, I know that I want my kids to come to me for the answers, yes. but I'm, I don't have the answers. And I need to, what, experience with them instead of above them? Sometimes they want you to be the authority because they right. genuinely want to believe that you have all the answers. But it's in our vulnerability that they gain trust. So when we're able to say, this one I can navigate because I've done this, this and this. But for me, a lot of it's just come down to trying to recognize, are they scared about something? 
Are they wanting an answer because they don't want to take responsibility for something? Or are they wanting an answer because they're curious and therefore can I guide them to open up their curiosity to find the answer from inside? So a lot of effort's been put into trying to help them see where their gut instinct is and how to hear their gut instinct and their voice inside because that's the biggest gauge that'll help them. Absolutely, we'll be back with more with Kindy Gill after this. We're celebrating Kindy Gill today and the work that she does in helping families to evolve into a happy, loving and peaceful environment at home. Fear is something that comes up in almost every aspect of life yes. and in the family it's at the core of a lot of things. Absolutely. In fact, it's the core of, of all the problems that arise. How? Would you how, believe? How so? It's because we're, because we're afraid of something. Like, for example, if I'm afraid to speak up, and so I can't actually tell you as a parent what I'm thinking about you as a child, right? And mm. I, but you've just said something or done something or asked me to do something that doesn't feel good. There's a divide. Right. There's a sense that I can't actually be honest with you. So I might be scared that my approach in how I share my response to the low spelling test right. is going to be damaging yeah. to his ego. So that's I right. say nothing. So I say nothing. So now there's this sense of sort of dishonesty that's beginning to evolve mm -hmm. because it's like you've become an authority that's one step removed from me and I can't actually share my vulnerabilities, my weaknesses, mm -hmm. where I'm falling over, where I don't feel comfortable, just out of fear. Mm -hmm. And yet, the minute we get to a point where we give our children the permission to one, be afraid. And how do you do that? What, what's an example that you like, could? Like, in, like the way that I would go about it is that if I see one of my ch children throwing a wobbly about something or other. <laughs> I love that phrase. I'm, I'm immediately on the alert that there's something there now that's destabilized them. Right? Mm -hmm. So I know that they're now feeling vulnerable, but so they're not going to show it. You're not on the alert for correcting what could be assumed to be wrong behavior or perceived as wrong behavior. Absolutely. I accept it as being the exact behavior that that child needs to display because that's the state that they're in. Mm -hmm. So then my role as a mother becomes more about, okay, so what is this vulnerability and how can I help this child to feel empowered so that they come out of it? And my instinct now, through the work that I've been doing with myself for such a long time, is, okay, there's gonna be a fear behind this, and it's either there's some need that isn't gonna get met, or there's some expectation that they're feeling that it hasn't been achieved, mm -hmm. or, or that there is some sort of wound. My conversation has said something, mm -hmm. and they felt wounded by it. They felt like that they were being judged by it, or they, they weren't feeling like they were enough, or something has happened to dent their sense of self. But what you can do is be very, very mindful of the fact that this is not about the fact that a child has behaved inappropriately. It's more about, it's like a cry for help mm -hmm. for you to offer guidance. So sometimes just to be able to share your own weaknesses and to share your own vulnerabilities is actually the safest ground for them to then be able to come back with you and share what's happening for them. So fear can be transformed into empowerment. Absolutely. In fact, that's the only way the changes happen in our behavior. The minute we get to see a fear wasn't real or we get to understand it so that we know now that we don't need to be locked inside it, that's when we suddenly find our strength that's suddenly when we find our voice, that's suddenly when we feel more comfortable in our own skin, and when all those things begin to happen, our communication automatically improves. Mm -hmm. Since you've begun this transformation in yourself and in your own family, how have your expectations of yourself in the role of mother changed? I've become easier on myself. We're pretty hard on ourselves. Yes. As I, human beings and even I, more so yeah. as moms. So as a mom, I carry less guilt. I carry less shame. I evaluate less about what I didn't do and I concentrate more on what I have managed to do. Um, I celebrate the fact that we're all very different. Mm -hmm. I also celebrate the fact that often my children are actually showing me faces that belong to me. How so? What does that look like? Because, because, for example, if you've got, like for example, my youngest daughter, very flamboyant, very, very gracious, loves being on the stage, but I recognized early that that was actually my sense of wanting to be 
as free as her, as to be as light-hearted as her, for me to be able to embrace joy in the same way as she's living. So I could see that this is actually something that I'm wanting. But when my son was timid and shy, I also recognized that I was once very timid, very shy, very nervous to speak up. Mm -hmm. So it's like each time you see a face, it's actually a part of a face or a part of a part of a phase that you've already lived through yourself. And that's one of the challenges of parenthood is to maybe identify what am I projecting and what's, what reflection am I interpreting yes. and how can I see this person, this child, that's as, right. as it, their own being yeah. without my yeah. stuff attached. Generally what I've found is that if I'm reacting and I'm getting triggered, then really what I'm seeing is a part of me mm. that I haven't yet accepted that I haven't yet acknowledged exists inside me, mm -hmm. and I've not yet said, yes, that is part of me, but that doesn't make me wrong or uh, bad. It just happens to be part of my nature. And it might be a little bit of a struggle, which is a lesson. That's right. Okay, we're gonna yeah. end our time with you today, Kindy, with uh, a power bite. I'm going to ask you to hold that and, and choose the one that jumps into your hand and read it out loud for us. Okay, so just okay. pick one out of there? Yep, just pick one out. Okay. <laughs> I bet you it fits. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it says strong women lead themselves first.